So it turns out getting things done is rather a broad topic and I have realized that people don't like clicking on longer videos. So I split the last video into two videos. Part one was a guide to getting things done and part two is a guide to getting things done in LogSeq. So in this video, we're gonna look a little bit more at how you can implement these principles in practice in LogSeq. Our point of departure for this video on how you would use GTD in LogSeq is this GTD flowchart. But if you didn't watch the previous video, I did a little bit of my own transformation of this to make it a horizontal workflow. So very simply to take this vertical workflow, if you're familiar with GTD, and just build it into this capture, clarify, organize thing. And as I said, in LogSeq, I try and consolidate all of this at the block level as soon as I'm inputting blocks. And here it's helpful to note that all your blocks can essentially be pulled together under a tag or a backlink of your choice. So you could have hashtag inbox for absolutely everything coming into your database and that could be part of your capture and then you could go at a later stage and do your clarifying and organizing or whatever. But I like to try and do everything at once with templates and metadata, but it's really a matter of personal preference. And what we have here are the endpoints of that diagram which we just saw. So let's just go back. These are the endpoints over here. You can see defer, delegate, reference, someday maybe, and then some other blocks to the right there. So I've just brought that forward into this next diagram or this next illustration, just so that we can show how this might be done in LogSeq using different tags so that you can do the capture, clarify, organize all at once, if that's what you're keen to do. And just something which I wanted to add here, for everything that you put into your database, it really helps to do some upfront thinking. I know a lot of people say that structure should be earned and it will definitely emerge over time. But this idea of like, what context will I need when I want to resurface this information again? Now, if you've ever used your WhatsApp chat history and gone and searched for keywords in a chat that you've had with a person, or you go into Google and you just add a couple of keywords in there, think of those keywords when you're adding your tags to your, to your blocks in LogSeq. That will really help you to find it very easily. So if you're wanting to put something in your calendar, you can use the forward slash scheduled or forward slash deadline. So that will open up a menu for you in LogSeq that will then enable you to add that calendar based information to your block. For your next actions, you can use the to do property. This is an inbuilt LogSeq property and you can access that by saying control plus enter. This is just the, the keyboard shortcut. Now, if you're waiting for something, you can type waiting in capitals, or you can bring that up by opening the forward slash menu and then typing waiting and selecting that. So all of the black words over there are what is like inbuilt on LogSeq. The stuff below here, or the stuff that's in red, is going to be my personal approach for how I do these things. So if there's something that's reference, what I'll do is I'll use my properties metadata, which I use extensively, and I'll say there it is the type reference and then any tags which might be appropriate. Is it a project? Is it a person? What are the things that I would Google essentially to go and find that information again? Put it in there. This someday maybe, I use a tag, someday maybe. For those of you who know about namespaces, I don't worry about the fact that it creates a namespace there. I just use that consistently wherever I have something which I may want to get to someday in the future. Then reminders. You can use the inbuilt space repetition to help you resurface things at certain times, but that might be a little bit more complicated. What I like to do is just have these two forward slash read, two forward slash watch, and that was a system that I saw in the Discord forums by Lumen, so thanks again Lumen for that. And that's really nice just to be able to go and navigate to your two page and then use the hierarchy at the bottom to go and, and find that. And I'll have a little bit of a walkthrough demo now. And then trash, you can just use the hashtag trash or just delete the block. You don't need to keep all the blocks in your database. That might be a little bit superfluous. So going back into LogSeq now, I'd just like to explain a little bit more and maybe give a few more ideas that you can implement. If you understood everything in that last section, you're like, sweet, let's go, 100%. If you want a little bit more context or maybe a few more ideas, this section is for you. As I said, one of the things that I like to do is to clarify, organize, do everything in the same breath. And that's really through this quick capture workflow. Now, my whole approach is using metadata and using keyboard shortcuts to input that metadata very quickly. And there's a couple of videos that look at that, but I'll link to that below. 
But in your case, I think it's important to think about what are the mental triggers that you might want to use? What is the context I'll need? And then the first thing there is who. So maybe you could use an at sign so that every time you start entering at when you go queries, I just went control K there, you can quickly find people. So we've already spoken about when a little bit more, it's using these scheduled and deadline blocks. And that would just be going forward slash scheduled. And then I could schedule a date there. Okay, that was very quick. Let me just say deadline there. And then I can say deadline 18th of March. I can add times 816, great. So that's now entering that time-based data into my Logseq database. Then where? So I'm saying that's where the, the at came in again. You could use ats here again, like maybe I need to do it when I'm at, at home, at work, at the shops. And then when you're at the shops, you can be like, oh, I had this note for shops. Let me go and find it. When you're at work, you could filter by that thing that at work rather than saying like, it's a work-based project. You like know that it's a context that I'm at work. Anyways, it might be helpful to differentiate with people. So maybe you could use the dollar sign there or something just to give you another way to think about these different places. So what are the different actions that you need to perform that you'll be entering into your database? So some examples here, maybe you need to email someone, maybe you need to call, and that would then be, if you have free time and you have your phone available, then you can just search and say, call, and then it will bring up all the thing, all the people or the blocks that have that call backlink in it. Maybe you have to buy things, Maybe you want to use a tag for next, like maybe this is your next action. And then once you've completed it, you can remove that tag. These are just suggestions. A very cool addition here is energy level by Kehi. So Kehi has got a channel where he looks at Notion and how you can implement GTD in Notion. And he's a great thinker in this productivity knowledge management space. And he's also got a great existentialist philosophy behind it. So have a look at his channel. Maybe some good suggestions for you there too. So we spoke earlier about how David Allen's views GTD as maintaining lists. And that's all about having lists that you can go to and find the work that you need to from the top of the pile and do the work. Now, I like to think of those blocks as the items at the top of my pile where I can have running agendas with people. So for instance, if I want to discuss this with someone, I would then just say, whoopsie, hashtag inbox. And hashtag Linda is a person that I've been using in my database recently. And there we go. Now, when I go to Linda's page, I can see filter by inbox and great. I've got two items from her. I need to discuss the rent with Linda and I need to discuss using inbox for running agenda with people for recurring meeting or for recurring meetings. Okay, great. So now I'm, I'm back where I need to be. If you have recurring meetings, use links there too so maybe it's your daily stand-up or some sort of project retro maybe you want to have something that you want to discuss at your next retro add the project retro inbox this and you can filter very quickly and it's very nice to be able to find the information you need very quickly using namespaces use namespaces very easily to navigate between pro projects use namespaces to navigate between projects very easily maybe it's a bit better and what that allows you to do is to collapse everything into your linked references. So if I just open this up on the left and I now go to my projects page over here, I can collapse this and I can see this full hierarchy of projects, which is great. It's, it's like really easily available to me at my fingertips, find the information I need very easily. And it's not buried in these linked references. This is one of the changes that I've implemented into my own database. I've taken the type projects out of project pages and I just have this namespace hierarchy now which works very well. Let me just stay over here, close that and speak about reflect. I'm not going to completely neglect reflect because I think it's an important part of the process and one of the things that you can do is set up dashboards using queries and even advanced queries. I'm exploring advanced queries a little bit, it's not part of my workflow at the moment but I do think it will be helpful to really take this dashboarding approach to the next level. Notion allows you to build really great dashboards. Logseek, I think we'll get there soon. Quickly looking at what these dashboards might look like. Let me open this up in the main page. Close this right page. That's TR, TL opens left there. And now I can go to this menu that I've set up of 
quick access items. And I've got here a home page. So for those of you who've looked at MOCs, that might be your approach to go and find the home page there. And I've got a whole bunch of queries here. I've got my projects list. I've got my reminders, my to do things. And that's using the namespace hierarchy. There's so much that we can go into here, but I don't want to get lost in the details. So I'm just going to zoom out. A lot of this information will be in other videos, or if you want it all in one place condensed, it'll be in the course. Thanks again for watching. I'd really like to get your perspective on if you enjoyed having these two videos separate, or if you'd prefer to have them all in one. I'm going to put out a poll in the community, and I'll just put those two options there. If you have any comments, like, you know, in terms of timestamps or something that would help you in future videos, please let me know. I've enjoyed doing the working sessions with friends and I'm looking to do a few more of those in future. Those will generally be longer videos. On the more tutorial type of video though, I've heard feedback from my friends that they preferred the short course approach that I did where things were very discreet and you can go and find the information easily. So it'd be great to know when thinking about videos for longer topics or when a video inevitably gets to be much longer, if you'd like that to be broken down as I've done this one or all in one. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Hopefully a lot more videos coming soon. This one has been on the back burner for a long time now and I'm very glad to finally get it out there. I hope you enjoyed it.